so this is a, a theoretical study. It's a collaboration uh, with uh, Kurt Mikkelsen and, and Mons uh, Bronsted. And it's the sort of a major chunk of the PhD thesis of, of mass courts. Um, let's see. So uh, the, the most system uh, that, that we're interested in here is this uh, DHA VHF uh, thermocouple. We saw, we already saw that this morning. Um, and, and there's, uh, Mons has done a lot of uh, experimental work on this as, as have others. Uh, and the, uh, I would say the main problem with this, so here's the parent compound. Uh, it, it has a relatively low uh, energy uh, density, so about 0.1 or so, this is computed, uh, and also a relatively uh, short uh, life, uh, half-life, so in this case about 11 hours, that's measured. Uh, so these are computed and these are also computed, but the, the half-life is measured. Uh, so Mons and Kurt uh, and, and a host of other people have done a lot of work on the system, and so, for example, they have managed to uh, increase the half-life uh, and the energy density uh, a bit. Uh, this molecule though has some problems with the uh, reversibility. Uh, and they've also uh, found compounds that have a quite high storage density, um, but, but then at the expense of the, of the lifetime. And so uh, what we decided to do uh, together here was try to uh, find molecules that, are, that is out here in this region. And so Mons came up um, with a set of substituents uh, that he would like us to try. So we have uh, relatively small groups, uh, sort of um, uh, both ele electron withdrawing and donating groups. Uh, and uh, what we wanted to uh, test here are these, uh, th the effect that they have on these seven positions, both on the uh, back reaction barrier and the storage density. Uh, we also have uh, benzene rings here with where these substituents are on the para position. Uh, and so if you, uh, so there are 47, if you also count hydrogen, there are 47 ligands here and seven positions. Uh, so that's uh, over 100 billion uh, different compounds. If you just uh, do one and two substituents, then you have about uh, 35,000. So this is where we decided to start um, with the one and two substituents, also because they're more synthetically accessible than, than higher than compounds with more substituents on them. So, uh, so the first part of the talk, I just want to focus on this, on these 36,000. Uh, and so here is the, the approach that we're taking. So basically, there's a lot of acronyms here uh, and whatnot. But basically uh, the main gist of this is that we take relatively cheap or relatively fast um, quantum calculations um, that allow us to screen all 35,000. So with this uh, level of theory here, you can do roughly on the order of 50,000 uh, different molecules without too much trouble. Uh, and then we use more and more expensive, uh, but also more accurate methods to sort of uh, narrow it down. So, so uh, basically, so what you have here, GFN2, XTB, and PM3 are what are known as semi-empirical methods. So they're about a thousand times faster than BFT, but they're still quantum. So you can calculate barriers or estimate barriers uh, and reaction energies with these methods. But because they're so fast, you can, you can uh, once you automate the process, you can, uh, with relatively modest uh, computational uh, facilities, you can, screen about 50,000 uh, molecules in a week or two. Um, also sort of for the experts in the audience, we do some approximations here um, because calculating the vibrational frequencies for these are kind of time consuming. So um, instead of the reaction enthalpy, which we really should look at, we look at the reaction, the electronic energy. A and also the free energy barrier is, uh, replaced by the enthalpy barrier. And here we do what's called an adiabatic scan to estimate the barrier. So we just, um, we, we pick this bond here uh, and 
constrain it to uh, in distances that are uh, intermediates between the DHA and the VHF. And so the energy will initially go up and then down and the highest energy structure is then the barrier. Um, so out of these um, 50,000, we then picked the, the 200 most promising candidates. Uh, and I'll show you that on the next slide. And here we use, now we use density functional theory, uh, but we still look at the electronic energy and also the conformational search is done in a sort of a rudimentary uh, fashion. And then out of these, we then pick uh, about 10 molecules or so, where we do a really, really careful job uh, and calculate the, the free energy of activation and the reaction enthalpy. Uh, but mainly as expensive here is now an exhaustive conformational search uh, because um, it's very important that we find the lowest energy structures uh, for all these molecules to get an, uh, a reasonable uh, reaction energy. Um, so here's, here's what that looks like. Um, so out of the 35,000 uh, molecules, uh, about 32,000 actually worked or converged. So, so those are the points you see here. And again, I plot the uh, energy density and the uh, enthalpy barrier, right? And we want to be up here in, in this region. Uh, and so from these, uh, all of these, we then pick uh, the molecules up here that have both, uh, at least at the semi-empirical level, um, a high energy density and a high barrier. And so exactly sort of where you draw this line is sort of a, a compromise between um, the sort of the, the errors so, uh, that these methods have. So you have to uh, sort of, um, allow for that when you set your, uh, when you set your cutoffs for, for, for which molecules you choose. You can't just assume that this is a completely accurate number. Uh, but on the other hand, you also want to, to have a reasonable number here. So here we picked about 100, uh, which is what you sort of can uh, test relatively easily uh, with density functional theory. The red line here is the corresponding computed values for the parent system. So uh, yeah, so from these, uh, now at the DFT level, we, uh, as you can see now that these numbers, if you look at the, at the values here are quite a bit different. Um, so we have a lot of false uh, positives here where the, the barrier is actually much lower than, than we thought. And we also have a, uh, with respect to the barrier and we also have some false negatives here uh, with respect to the storage energy. But in general, it's easier to compute an act an accurate storage density compared to an accurate barrier. Uh, then we pick these here, which are the most uh, promising ones uh, for a more thorough uh, DFT calculations. But as you can see here, uh, there really aren't any uh, molecules when you have two substituents, right? With very high storage density. So, so we don't really approach uh, you know, 0 0.3 or, or even higher. Okay, but so this is what we, what we find. Uh, so uh, these blue dots are some of the most promising ones with two substituents. Uh, and so as you can see here, uh, we also checked some, uh, some out with a high storage density, but low barrier just to, just to be sure. And indeed they have a, a, a very low barrier and therefore a very short half-life, right? But so we moved a little bit away um, from uh, the parent compound towards this region here, but you know, there aren't really any super good candidates with two substituents. And so I should emphasize here that we've tried all combinations now. So it's, it's, it's really an exhaustive search here and there just aren't any promising uh, candidates with the substituents that we chose. Okay, so that means we have to look at uh, higher order substitutions. And so we decided to look at all of them. Uh, and so we can't, we can't do a billion uh, calculations with, with any sort of quantum method, even though it's semi-empirical. So we selected a subset uh, <clears throat> of about 50,000, and then we trained some machine learning models uh, on this data to predict both the reaction energy um, and the uh, uh, barrier to the back reaction. 
So we picked a very cheap one, just straight linear regression, where you basically assume that the effect of the substituents are additive. And that allowed us to do all 230 billion compounds. Then we picked uh, the most, the about 10 million of the most promising ones. I'll show you that on the next slide exactly where the cutoff is. Uh, and so with a more uh, expensive, but also more accurate machine learning model. Uh, and then we picked the 15,000 uh, most promising candidates uh, based on machine learning. And then we now use the, the same semi-empirical methods and DFT methods to do the, um, to do the refinement. Uh, so here's sort of what the, what the actual data looks like. So this is the linear regression. Now, this is so, sort of a histogram uh, of, uh, this, of the number of molecules with a particular storage energy. And we picked a cutoff here of 0.3. Uh, and so all these molecules here, we then sent on to the more accurate, uh, but also slower light GBM method. And so there is about 10 million of those. Uh, and so you can see um, you get somewhat a, a somewhat different picture using a more accurate machine learning model. Uh, and some from these, again, we chose a cutoff here of about, I think it's 0.45. Uh, and uh, we then selected all these molecules. You can't really see them, but there is actually uh, tens of thousands of molecules here. Uh, and then we performed the semi-empirical methods, again, picked a cutoff, and then performed the uh, the DFT calculations. So, and so if uh, the most, the best molecule out of all of those, so, so, a mo so a molecule is this one. So it has a reasonably uh, large barrier to, to the back reaction. So we think the lifetime of this would actually be quite long, uh, but the storage density is, is still kind of disappointingly low. So it's about 0.38 or 0.4 uh, kilojoule per gram. So the main conclusion, well, okay, let me, uh, so a relatively low storage density. It also has relatively bad absorption properties. So, so this, the blue one here is the computed absorption spectrum for the parent molecule, uh, DHA. Uh, and this molecule nine here is, is the molecule you're seeing here, right? And so the, um, the absorption peaks has, sh has shifted uh, away from the, from the visible region. So it has sort of several strikes against it. Not a very high storage density, not good absorption properties, um, but also quite synthetically inaccessible, right? Because there are, there are substituents on all seven positions. Uh, and so making this would be quite difficult and there doesn't really seem to be a compelling enough reason to spend time on developing the synthetic methodology. Uh, so, the, so the main conclusion from this study is, is that there, in, in all these substituents, uh, we've tried all combinations now and they're pretty convinced that none of these combinations that you can think of will give you an energy density uh, larger than uh, 0.5 kilojoules per gram with a, a reasonable uh, lifetime. So, so, so basically our message here is, you know, th the answer isn't in this uh, kind of, uh, of uh, chemistry and you have to sort of do other uh, things to the DHA scaffold. Uh, one thing we're looking at now is to introduce nitrogen atoms in, in the scaffold uh, to see how that affects uh, these parameters. And obviously lesson learned from, uh, from this study is that we, in screening, we also have to include the absorption properties uh, along with the, with the uh, energy density and uh, the back reaction barrier. So that's what we're working on now. Okay, that's, that's it for me. Thank you very much for your attention.